Hello and welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you my preferred method of rendering my multi-track drum samples down to uh, an easy to manage file in my mix. So a lot of people want to know how to render your tracks. Uh, so you have your kick and your snare and your toms all in separate tracks and you mix it like you've already recorded real drums. I don't like to do it that way. So this is my preferred method, which is to freeze the multi-channel track. So I would freeze this virtual instrument track instead of rendering these tracks, all these separate tracks as audio. I don't want separate kick, snare, uh, et cetera, files, unless I was sending it to someone else. If I'm keeping it in the session and I want the option of changing my snare drum sound later, I want to keep all my effects and everything just how it is. I just don't want to have the RAM usage. I just want it frozen. So here's how I do it. So first of all, we've got our virtual instrument and I've got it on its own track. I have the multi-channel routing. Uh, let's look at the mixer in Steven Svate drums. And they're all going to different uh, mono outs or stereo outs, depending on the tracks. So kicks are going to a mono, uh, overheads and rooms are going out to stereo tracks. I'm using 24 outputs, not using actually all 24 outputs, uh, but pretty close to it. So you can see all the routing here on this virtual instrument track. And then I've got some folders. I already have plugins on these. I've got panning and stuff. And I don't want to commit that to uh, audio files. If I rendered the output of these tracks, like I've seen in some other videos, you would have their fader levels, you would have the plugins, you'd have the panning all committed to the recorded files, uh, which means you couldn't do any pre-mixing, can't do any rough mixing. Uh, before you record it out, uh, or you lose all those settings. All right, so here's just a quick example of how it sounds using Steven Slate drums. And what I'm about to show you will work with Steven Slate drums or Easy Drummer or BFD or whatever your virtual instrument is that has your multi-channel routing set up already. You don't want to change your mix. You don't want to affect the levels. You don't want to uh, commit any of the individual plugins to the tracks. You just want to commit and freeze the virtual instrument to unload all that those samples from RAM. Take your sampler track, go to render slash freeze tracks, and you go to freeze tracks to multi-channel, render pre-fader, save, remove items, and online effects. So this is making a 24-channel WAV file. We're not seeing anything on the meters here uh, because these are all pre-fader sends, and this fader is turned down. So if I had that up, you would see stuff there. Um, but when I play this back in a second, it's going to be exactly the same as it was before, minus the randomization that you would get um, playing the same samples um, through the sampler. It's just going to be the same every time, which is fine. That's more like a real drum kit. Uh, it already has the randomization baked into it, essentially. The only difference there is that when I hit stop, we don't hear the cymbal tails ring out uh, because it's playing back a WAV file. If we zoom in here, I'll close the dock, zoom in here, you can see kick and snare, snare top, I've got probably toms there, and I've got our, the uh, stereo room samples and all that stuff. So it's all kind of baked into this uh, locked WAV file. If I go to uh, source properties, we can see this, this is a 24-bit, uh, 44 one, which is the sample rate and the bit depth that I've picked 24 channels as well. So that's exactly what we wanted. And now let's say we want to change this later on. We could right click on the track, go to render freeze tracks. Unfreeze tracks is now available. So we can click this. The plugin loads up again. You can see it loading the samples into RAM. And if we don't like this snare, we can choose a different snare. I'm not going to, but I think you get the idea. 
um, you have the option of coming back to ex the exact same place as when you froze the tracks. Um, you don't have to commit any of the other effects, just the stuff that takes up all that RAM. And once again, this works with Easy Drummer, it works with BFD, it works with Geist. Name any virtual instrument with multi-channel outputs. This is going to work. You can freeze it multi-channel. It's a lot faster than recording out in real time. It's a lot better than going through the render matrix, rendering out all these individual tracks and then importing them back in. Uh, there are times when that's the better option when you're sending to a, a, someone else to mix. But if you're just mixing your own stuff and you want to get rid of that uh, 1.6 gigs of samples loaded into RAM, this is the best way that I found and is what I do every time. So that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. Visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. Thank you.